Hey guys, welcome back to Off the Beaten Track with Miss Drake. Um, first off, I wanted to tell you guys, um, hi. I hope you guys are doing well. I miss you. Um, thank you for watching my videos. I know quite a few of you do. I know you keep up on them, which is awesome and great. Keep up the great work. For those of you that have been interacting with me on Google Classroom and taking the time to fill out that Google form even better, um, I really appreciate hearing from you and love that you guys keep me on your mind. So moving on this week, I decided to do a relaxation video, um, kind of being cooped up for so long and the weather being kind of less awesome, not as sunny. Um, I felt like it was really important to take a minute and a time out to, um, remember to do some relaxation and how to breathe and how to reduce stress. So this is a yoga slash uh, relaxation video. As always, when you do yoga, please take the time to listen to your body. Um, only go as far into a stretch that you feel comfortable with. A stretch should be uncomfortable, but not painful. There's a huge difference in those two different things. You can also sit for a period of time in a stretch and settle into it by breathing. And then you'll feel your body relax a little bit and allow you some additional stretch, but never ever go right into the deepest part of the stretch right away. Give your body a chance to um, relax into it and accommodate to any kind of stretch we do today. You'll also see in this video that I've put in like a little moment where you just get to spend some time with the stretch before we move on. Um, you'll also see some clips because no matter how many times I filmed this video, um, my pets kept wanting to join me for yoga, which they actually do in real life. So they kind of um, just participate. I think they like the music and I think they like the calmness of the activity. So they tend to participate. So the result is, as you'll see in my video, um, some clips or some stops. So no matter how many times I filmed it, that was kind of what happened when I was filming this video. So um, you can laugh with me if you see the occasional tale or if you just see that like, geez, this is really broken out, but that's why. Um, also, when it comes to um, relaxation and stretching, it's really important to focus on your breathing. Remember, you want to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Um, we don't want to reverse the direction. If you find yourself breathing hard, go ahead and slow down. You can also um, stop at any point and restart. Just do what feels good for you and your body. And even if that means going into pose of a child, which I'll show you right away off the video, or into shavasana, which means corpse pose <laughs> or laying on your back, um, you can do either one of those if you get fatigued or tired at any given point. So remember, listen to your body. It's a good lesson. Um, stretching and relaxation and yoga are all really great lessons on how to listen to our body and know where it is in the moment. So I have days where I'm really flexible and I have days where I'm less flexible. So keep that all in mind. So hope you'll join me and have some fun with some stretching and some relaxation. And until next time, stay safe, be healthy, and I'll see you later. Bye. We will begin our yoga class by settling in. Remember that you can choose to settle in in a seated position with your hands up or down. You can also do so on your knees. But the important part is to close your eyes, begin to breathe through the nose and mouth, and to keep your spine straight and tall.
remaining in the seated position, begin to tilt your head to one side, allowing your head to feel heavy and fall towards your shoulder. Do not raise your shoulder towards your ear, but rather drop your ear to your shoulder. Switch now to the other side, and again allow your head to be heavy and drop your ear to your shoulder. Come back to center and drop your chin to your chest, allowing your chin to fall forward. For spinal twist, raise one arm and place it behind your back. Reach across your body and grab hold of your knee and slowly begin to twist looking at the wall behind you. Make sure that your spine is straight and tall. Switching sides, again, keep a straight and tall spine and ease into the stretch. Keeping your spine tall, reach up and over your head, allowing your grounded hand to slide to the side, opening the side body and elongating the muscles along the side of the torso. When switching, make sure that your shoulder is down and away from your shoulder. You will see me make that adjustment. Stretching your feet long and straight, reach high above your head and reach out and over the waist. Reach only as far as you can comfortably. Allow your body to relax into the stretch as this is a deep hamstring stretch. Remembering to breathe in and out, through your, in through your nose and out through your mouth. On an out breath, if you are comfortable, you can attempt to reach farther.
An important placement for the hands is the four points of the hand, two on top and two on bottom. Make sure all four points are in contact with the floor. Drop your head and raise your back. And then rise the head and let your stomach fall to the earth for a cat-cow stretch. During the pose of the child stretch, remember to keep the four points of contact on the ground with both hands and your big toes together. You ultimately would like to get your bottom down to sitting on your heels. If it is uncomfortable for you to have your hands over your head, go ahead and put your hands down to the sides and let your forehead support your body. In Downward Dog, you really want to keep the four points of the hands again on the floor, and you also want to push away from the hands, pushing back into the feet. Begin to cycle your feet in order to loosen the hamstrings and the calf muscles, and to slowly ease into Downward Dog. Allow your head to drop, and do not forget to breathe in and out. You can shift forward into plank to open the shoulders and begin to create movement in the body. You can bring a knee up and out to add additional core work or you can simply remain in downward dog. If whatever you do on one side, repeat on the other. To change positions at a downward dog, we're going to step, hop, or jump with the feet to the hands, allowing your body to remain folded forward and your head to dangle as much as comfortable. Slide your hands up the body and again raise the hands high overhead and drop forward into forward fold.
For the next series of movements, we will do four positions, wide mountain pose, warrior two, reverse warrior, and triangle pose. We will begin with wide mountain pose. As comfortably as you can, move your feet to wide. Turn your front foot forward and your back foot to 45 degrees. Bring your arms to shoulder height, shoulder blades back and down, and slowly drop your knee forward. This is warrior two. Palm up and back wall facing to reverse warrior. Allow your body to fall forward, the front leg to straighten and into triangle. If you would like to intensify the stretch, you can look up your arm at the ceiling. Be sure to repeat the motion by turning the opposite direction. Today we are focusing on foot and leg placement rather than upper body, so please look carefully at the way the feet and legs move. For our next series, we will do two motions, knee to chest and lying twist. We will begin by moving to the front of the mat and coming up onto the toes with hands in front of us for balance. Drop into a squat position and then allow your body to rock back onto the mat. You can rock forward and back a few times and allow your body to come into contact with the mat. With your hands around your knees, you can then rock side to side, allowing your back to soften and prepare for the twisted stretch while laying on the ground. Bringing one knee to your chest, allow the other leg to fall to the floor. You can pull on the knee and intensify the stretch. With your hand still around your knee, go ahead and pull your knee across the body while letting your other arm lay flat on the mat. Intensify the stretch by slowly working your knee towards the floor. This is a lying twisted stretch.
As we move into our final stretch, the corpse pose, the actual name of the corpse pose is Shavasana, but it means corpse pose. When lying on the mat, take the moment to get all of your wiggles and remaining movements out of your body and begin to breathe in deeply in through the nose and out through the mouth. As you lie there, imagine your body sinking and relaxing into the mat or into the sand. If you'd like to imagine a beach or a forest where you are very comfortable and happy, this is also a good place to send your mind so that you can relax. A guided meditation allows us to slowly relax our body a few small muscle groups at a time. Let's begin by tightening the feet. Hold them tightly and let them relax. Moving up to your legs, go ahead and raise one leg or both off of the ground and hold them tightly and let them relax and fall to the ground. Moving up to your stomach, tighten your abdominal muscles, flatten your back, and then release. Move up to your hands, make tight fists, tighten, and then release and let them go. Take your tongue off the roof of your mouth and allow your head to be heavy and sink into the ground. Let any remaining tension slide out of your fingertips and out of your toes into the earth. Remain in corpse pose or shavasana as long as you need. your side and come to a seated position. Again, remember to breathe in and out as you begin to prepare to close the class. In a traditional yoga class, the word namaste is used to end a class. Namaste means to bow. It is a way of recognizing the people in the class and a polite greeting. You are welcome to use the word Namaste to join in with a class closing, or you are welcome to not participate in the Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for joining me for this class today. May you have a good day.